Hello and welcome back to TAE certification training series. So we have just finished chapter four and now it's time to put our knowledge to the test. We will go through the questions and I encourage you to take a moment to think about your answers before we discuss them together. So here we go. Okay, let's start with question number one. Why is maintenance essential for a test automation solution? And the options are A, maintenance ensures that the TAS development is trivial. B, maintenance allows for frequent changes to the TAS architecture. C, maintenance ensures reliable and safe operation of the TAS. And D, maintenance decreases the TAS lifespan. And the correct option is C, maintenance ensures reliable and safe operation of the TAS. So maintenance involves activities that help adapt the TAS to new systems, support new software environments, and ensure compliance with laws and regulations. And this ensures that the TAS continues to function effectively and safely. Now let's see the other incorrect options. Option A is incorrect because maintenance does not make development trivial. Rather, it helps ensuring that the TAS remains effective over time. Option B, this statement is misleading as it suggests that maintenance leads to frequent changes in the TAS architecture, which is incorrect. The purpose of maintenance is not about allowing uh, frequent changes to the architecture, but rather ensuring the ongoing integrity and effectiveness of the automation solution. Now let's have a look at option D. This is incorrect because in practice, maintenance is intended to optimize the lifespan and performance of the TAS. Proper maintenance can extend the useful life of the TAS by keeping it up to date and uh, aligned, it, aligned with the changing requirements, technologies and regulations. Question two, what are the key characteristics that test automation solutions need to possess? A, simplicity and minimal scalability. B, complexity and frequent changes. C, modularity, scalability, understandability and reliability. And D, static architecture and limited adaptability. And the correct option is C, modularity, scalability, understandability, and reliability. So the key characteristics that TES need to possess typically include modularity, which is for ease of maintenance and flexibility. Then we have scalability, which is to handle various testing scenarios. Then understandability to facilitate effective usage and maintenance and reliability to ensure consistent test results. These practices align with the best practices in test automation. Now let's have a look at option A. This one is incorrect because TS typically needs to be scalable to accommodate various testing scenarios and environment. While simplicity is valuable for ease of use, it is not always directly associated with minimal scalability. Then let's come to option B. This one is also incorrect because complexity is not necessarily a desirable characteristic for TES. TES should ideally possess characteristics like modularity and reliability to ensure effective test automation. Frequent changes may be needed for maintenance, but it's not a primary characteristic of TES. Now coming over to option D. This is incorrect because static architecture and limited adaptability would limit the flexibility and effectiveness of TAS. TAS should be adaptable to accommodate changes in the system under test and the testing environment, making D an incorrect choice. Question number three, we have a scenario over here. You are responsible for maintaining a complex test automation solution for a software testing project. The TAS has grown in size over the years due to the addition of new test cases and support for various versions of the SUT. What factors should you consider when determining the scope of maintenance for the TAS? A, the number of users of the TAS. 
B, the programming language used in the TAS. C, the size and complexity of the TAS. D, the number of test cases. Okay, so the scope of maintenance depends on three factors. Number one, the size and complexity of the TAS. Hence, C is the correct option. And the other two are the size of the change and the risk of the change. Hence, all the other options are incorrect. Question four, you are part of a test automation team working on a critical project. Your team needs to perform maintenance on the TAS to adapt it to support a new version of the SUT. What type of maintenance does this scenario represent? A, corrective maintenance. B, preventive maintenance. C, perfective maintenance. Or D, adaptive maintenance. And the correct answer is D, adaptive maintenance. In the given scenario, the TAS needs to be adapted to support a new version of the SUT, which aligns with the definition of adaptive maintenance. Option A, corrective maintenance is incorrect because it involves fixing failures. Similarly, option B, preventive maintenance aims to support more test types. And option C, perfective maintenance focuses on optimization and non-functional issues. Question five, why is it important to document third-party components and libraries used in a TAS? Option A, to ensure that third-party components cannot be modified. B, to have a plan for external component modification or fixes. C, to avoid using third-party components altogether. Or D, to keep the TAS code base clean and readable. And the correct answer is B. So it is necessary to have a plan in case external components need to be modified or fixed. Documentation of third party components and libraries is crucial to know who to contact or where to submit an issue if modifications or fixes are required. It ensures that there is a proactive strategy in place to address issues with external components, reducing the risk of disruption in TAS operation. Okay, now let's have a look at the other options and see why they are incorrect. Option A, to ensure that third party components cannot be modified. Okay, so documentation is not about preventing modifications to third party components, but having a plan for addressing potential modifications. Then we have option C, to avoid using third party components altogether. Now, this option is incorrect because it suggests avoiding the use of third party components, which is not correct. And then we have D to keep the TAS code base clean and readable. OK, so now this option does have a connection to the overall benefits of documentation, but it is more focused on journal code base management and readability. Hence, this is also not a suitable option for this question. Question number six, what is one of the primary reasons for using naming standards and conventions in a test automation project? A, to increase project complexity. B, to minimize the use of variables and files. C, to improve readability, understanding, and maintainability. Or D, to introduce more people to the project. And the correct answer is C, to improve readability, understanding, and maintainability. Naming standards and conventions are used to make the TAS code and test suite easier to read, understand, change, and maintain. Options A, B, and D, they do not accurately reflect the primary purpose of naming standards. Question seven, why is it important to introduce documentation as part of the development process? Option A, to eliminate the need for documentation entirely. B, to ensure all code is self-documenting. C, to track the number of components in the TAS. Or D, to maintain documentation for design, components, integrations, and more. And the correct option is D, to maintain documentation for design, components, integrations, and more. So this option is correct because this 
accurately reflects the primary purpose of introducing documentation as part of the development process. It emphasizes the importance of uh, maintaining documentation for various aspects of the project. Now let's have a look at the other options which are incorrect. Option A. Option A suggests that introducing documentation at the development stage eliminates the need for documentation at other stages of the project. Now this interpretation is not accurate as documentation is typically required throughout the project life cycle including design, development, testing, deployment and maintenance. Now let's have a look at option B to ensure all code is self-documenting. In software development, self-documenting code refers to writing code in such a way that it is expressive and easy to understand without the need for extensive comments or external documentation. It has many advantages, but self-documenting code does not eliminate the need for all documentation. Documentation is still essential for explaining high-level design decisions, architecture, system dependencies and other non-code related aspects of the project. Now let's have a look at the option C to track the number of components in the TAS. Okay, so this option suggests that introducing documentation is primarily for tracking the number of components in the TAS. Documentation serves a broader purpose, including facilitating understanding, maintenance, and communication. Hence, this is uh, also an incorrect option. Question eight, what is the key challenge related to documentation in a test automation project? A, the need to track the number of third-party components used. B, the requirement for external contractors to write documentation. C, the need for someone to write and maintain documentation. Or D, the choice between self-documenting and semi-automatic documentation. And the correct answer is C, the need for someone to write and maintain documentation. Okay, so when it comes to documentation, the challenge is that someone needs to take on the responsibility of consistently creating and maintaining documentation for various aspects of the project. Now let's have a look at the other incorrect options. Option A, while tracking third party components is important for configuration management, it is not the central challenge when it comes to documentation in a test automation project. Now let's have a look at option B. This option is not the primary key challenge either. The central challenge is, ins is ensuring that documentation is consistently created and maintained regardless of who writes it. Then we have option D. This option is related to the approach of documentation, which is self-documenting versus semi-automatic documentation rather than the challenge. The key challenge is not in choosing between these approaches, but in having someone responsible for consistently creating and maintaining documentation. Question nine, you are tasked with maintaining the training material for the TAS. When is it typically done? Option A, at the beginning of a software development project. Option B, during the middle of a life cycle iteration. C, towards the end of a life cycle iteration of the SUT. Or D, only when major changes are made to the TAS. And the correct answer is C. Now, C is the correct option because the maintenance of training material usually occurs towards the end of a life cycle iteration of the SUT, such as the end of the sprints. All other options are incorrect because they do not align with the timing for the maintenance of training material. And here is our last question. Question number 10. Your team has recently made significant changes to the TAS. Do you need to update the training material? Option A, no, the training material remains unchanged. Option B, yes, but only if there are changes to the user manual. Option C, yes, updating the training material is necessary after significant TES changes. Or option D, it depends on whether the changes affect the deployment procedures. And the correct answer is option C. Now option C is the correct answer because it accurately reflects the practice in many cases. 
when significant changes are made to the TES, it is necessary to update the training material. This ensures that training material align with the current TES functionality, design, and usage, and provides accurate information to users or trainees. Now let's see why the other options are incorrect. Option A, no, the training material remains unchanged. This option is incorrect because in practice, significant changes to the TAS often necessitate updates to the training material. This ensures that the training material accurately reflects the current state and functionality of the TAS. Then we have option B, yes, but only if there are changes to the user manual. This option is not entirely accurate because significant changes to the TAS may impact various aspects covered in the training material not just the user manual. It is important to update the entire training material to maintain accuracy and relevance. Then we have option D. It depends on whether the changes affect the deployment procedures. This option is not comprehensive because significant TS changes can impact multiple aspects covered in the training material beyond deployment procedures. Therefore, the need for updates is not solely dependent on changes to deployment procedures. So this option is also not correct. I hope these practice questions have boosted your confidence. In next session, we will start a new chapter. Until then, happy testing.